Dr. Benton, Dean Livingstone, distinguished faculty and staff for the Grazadillo School of Business and Management. It's with great anticipation, probably trepidation, to be before all of you, you graduates, and your family members and loved ones here that support you. I'm, I was hoping there was gonna be a picture of George Grazadillo. Ah, yes. Thank you. Thank you, whoever did that. Um, imagine you having the opportunity after today to meet George Grazadillo. He would come up to you and you would recognize his presence right away. He was a tall man, probably 6'3 or though, but a big man, a robust man. And he would come up to you and he'd say, hi, I'm George Grazadillo. And you would say, and he'd say, he would ask you, what's your name? Where are you from? And you would say, my name's Sue. I'm from Oklahoma. Oklahoma, he'd say. Well, my wife's from Oklahoma. Dean Livingston also. <laughs> but, and he'd ask, what are your plans after graduation? And you'd say, I think I want to go into investment banking. And his face would light up. Banking, I know a little bit about banking, he'd say. And he'd look at you and he had these blue eyes that would just really look at you. His eyes would not leave you. And he would be called away to meet the next person or other, but he would say, Sue from Oklahoma, very nice to meet you. Good luck in investment banking. I look forward to staying in touch with you. And, you'd walk, and he'd walk away and you would wonder, wow, he remembered my name, where I was from. This was George Grazadillo. He had an uncanny ability to remember people, their names, and if he saw you two or three weeks later, he would remember who you were, what your interest was, where you were from. And a lot of people would ask, how do you do that? How do you, can you do that? But the real question is, why would he do that? And the reason why is because George Grazadillo was a very caring person. Underlying all the success and everything, George really cared about people. He was a people person. First and foremost, he loved his family, and his family loved him. His family supported him, but he took care of the family. He had his, his wife, Reva, for they're married almost 60 years. Three children, Mary Lou, Lewis, and my wife, Alita. He had seven grandchildren, and he had two more about a year before he passed. So he had nine grandchildren. And at the time of his passing, he had five great-grandchildren. And his grandchildren loved him. They loved to be around George. They thought George was just the best thing because when, he came, when they came over to visit him, he was engaging with them. He would take time. He'd get on the floor and play with them, read books to them. He wasn't this businessman that as soon as the grandkids came over would go into his own office or something. Quite the contrary. He, <clears throat> he enjoyed being with his family. And if there was a party or a birthday that was going to be happening, he was going to be there. If he was in town, he made sure the birthday party happened. And it was a command performance for everybody to also be there. So he'd let you know, I expect to see you. And George was also very caring in the business world. As you can imagine, he had many business associates over the years, many business individuals that he was in partnerships with. And he kept in touch with his business associates. He made an extraordinary effort to stay in touch, to communicate, write letters, telephone calls, invitations to come to uh, whatever social events that were happening that George was involved with. It was almost as if George went forward in life with all of his friends and all of his business associates and they all went together with George. He stayed in touch with them. He nourished those business and friendship relationships throughout his life. It was extraordinary that 
At the time of his death, we had the uh, memorial service here in this room, and there must have been over a thousand or plus people that were here, right, Dr. Ben? Yeah. Unbelievable amount of people that George, whose lives he had touched because he was caring. George was passionate. Being half Italian, half Irish, I guess it was almost unavoidable for George to be passionate but he was incredibly passionate about what he did. I re recently read that vision is a precondition to passion, and that passion is a precondition to entrepreneurial, social, and world-changing events. This was George. He was a visionary. He saw the possibilities. If he took a drive to look at real estate, he said that would be a great location, this would be a good location. He had this great intuitive sense also. But he would learn to develop the real estate based on his sense of where a good location was. He would, uh, as when the children were young, he would take them for drives in cars and they were all excited to go driving with dad on the weekend. But he, and he would tell them, here, write down that phone number, or write down that phone number. And they would be in the back seat writing the phone numbers and he'd say, great, thank you. And come Monday, he'd be calling on those phone numbers to see if that property was available and if there was an opportunity there. You hear about Imperial Bank and how he started Imperial Bank with his partner, George Eltings. And they had this vision to start a bank. Their vision was, we'll open up a bank that can understand our particular and specific needs so we can borrow from it. Little did they know they couldn't borrow any money from that bank they started, the conflicts of interest. But they went forward with Imperial Bank, and as you heard on the video, that they built that from a little $1.5 million capital up to $8 billion. What did it take? It took passion. And passion is what keeps perseverance going, and George was and could persevere to the end. He was a hard worker. Hardest worker I've ever been around. He'd love to call you before seven in the morning to see if you were up because he was already out the door looking for something to do. He was on his way to an opportunity. So with his passion, George also didn't forget to have fun. We talk about him as a success, successful businessman. He was a very fun-loving person. He loved to enjoy himself. He loved to celebrate with people. He loved to well, he had a great passion for golf and never knew how that golf would go and depending on how he played that particular day, but he really enjoyed himself. He enjoyed his friends and his friends enjoyed being around him. He had a great laugh. He loved to laugh and, and he loved to be involved with people. He was the most optimistic person that you would be around. He, he really never had negative thoughts. He kept positive about everything and sometimes you go, gosh, this is not going to work. This is terrible, George. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, find the right, uh, we'll find the right opportunity here. Keep going. Keep going. And he would push forward and continue to seek that opportunity with his optimism. George was also extremely generous. Now here at the business school, it's fairly evident of that generosity. But there was a time when George, in his late 30s, was extremely poor. He lived in Inglewood in a two-bedroom, one-bath house with his wife and three children. And he was always out working and trying to better himself. But George was incredibly generous. And being poor, he gave the most precious gift of all, his time, time. He gave time to the community. He in, in, involved himself in the community, joined organizations. He joined the 2030 Club as a member and rose up the ranks to become the international president of the 2030 Club. He made friends all over the world through the 2030 Club, became friends in London where he later became a member of Lloyd's of London, Mexico City where he became a partner in a medical supply business in Mexico City. This was George Grazadillo. His generosity to people was incredible. George was always available 
to give advice. People sought George out to ask about business, to ask about personal matters, and he was always willing to give his time. Once I had a couple of senior partners ask me, can you arrange a meeting with George? We'd like to see if our firm can get some of the business from Imperial Bank. And I kind of chuckled to myself, and I said, sure, I'll, I'll ask George, and I did. And George said, sure, bring him on down. We'll meet with him. And these two senior partners and I met with George for about an hour. And I remember leaving after that meeting. And these were attorneys. One was the former state bar president for the state bar, trial lawyer of the year. So these were pretty sharp people. They get in the elevator after we meet with George, and one looks at the other, and he starts chuckling, and he says, that's the sharpest guy I have ever met. That was George Grosadillo, able to impress these lawyers thinking they were coming to get business, and they walk out being the ones impressed. At the end of the, <coughs> excuse me, at the end of the video, there's a statement that George created an opportunity for you. Yes, he did. But he would be so proud of you because you put the hard work into that opportunity. You're sitting here because of your hard work and because of that you have graduated from the Grazadillo School of Business and Management. How proud he would be, how much he would love to be here to meet you, to thank you for being here, to get to know your name, where you were from, and what your plans are. So I want to close with this quote about success, written by Ralph Waldo Emerson. To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a better place, whether by a healthy child or garden patch or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This was George Grazadillo. From the Grazadillo family to all of you, congratulations.